Welcome to the channel, I'm James, and today we are looking at NVIDIA Corporation, ticker symbol NVDA. They have just released earnings right now, and I'm going to be going through them. Then I'm going to be giving my fair value of the company based on these updated earnings using discounted free cash flow model and the Buffett Graham intrinsic value. Is this stock a buy or a sell? And let's just see what the stock price is doing. Post market is actually down almost a percent, $263.21. So the market hasn't really reacted too much, but these have only came out about eight minutes ago. So this is pretty live. It's down from its all time high of 340. But if we look, this stock has been on an absolute tear. As you know, after the after the stock split, uh, it's gone up even higher. It was down to $49 at the bottom of the pandemic and is now at 260. That is absolutely crazy. So let's have a look at the earnings. Just before I go into this, can you please give a like on the video and subscribe if you're not already because I'll be releasing these videos every day, giving you the earnings on these stocks. But let's have a look. NVIDIA announces financial results for fourth quarter and fiscal 2022. Record quarterly revenue of 7.46 billion, of 53% from a year earlier. And the record fiscal revenue is 26.91 billion, up 61%. Let's just get straight into these. We'll scroll past these to the very bottom where it includes everything. So there is it. There it is. We have the three months ended on this side and the 12 months ended. Record quarter, 7.6 billion. This time last year it was 5 billion. And if we compare the 12 months ended, 16.6 billion to 27. They've had an absolutely crazy, crazy year. And if we just compare to Yahoo Finance, what those numbers previously were, ignore the trailing 12 months because Yahoo Finance is not updated. We are too soon for Yahoo Finance to be updated. 11 billion in 19, 10 billion in 20, and 16 billion in 2021. And now we're up to 26 billion. This is a crazy year for NVIDIA. Next, we're going to be looking at the profit. Uh, profit is down here, net income. You can see for the quarter in 2021, 1.4 billion. That is up to 3 billion. A record quarter, I believe, again. And the 12 months ended more than doubled 4.3 billion to 9.7. How do we get the profit? We take uh, revenue and then minus all the operating expenses. So, where is the majority of these happening? Uh, R&D 5.2 billion up massively and sales general administrative up very slightly. So research and development is up uh, slightly on the quarters, but a bit more on the year, but everything else is flat. 7.4 billion in uh, total operating expenses minus that, that gives, well, minus all the other stuff as well. That gives you 9.7. So a record quarter for profit, almost doubled what it was in 2021. The next thing we want to do is have a look at the shares. Uh, the shares are displayed here and unfortunately nvidia are issuing more shares remember this is 2022 this is 2021 not much uh, about 30 million shares but still up and if we go back to yahoo finance what have they been doing well nvidia have consistently added shares um, every single year so what is the negative on that well basically they are diluting the shareholder not by much but they still are. If you have one share in a company and they have 10 shares and you own 10%, if they issue 10 more shares and have 20%, you now own 5% in that company. So you as an investor have less of those profits. But if NVIDIA in raise, uh, use the capital that they get from this wisely, invest it, put it in R&D, put it where they want to do it, and this enables them to generate more revenue, then the share price will go up and then you won't really care. But it is something that we have to think about. Next, we want to be looking at the cash flow statement. And we want to be looking at the free cash flow. So they don't have it right here. They will uh, they display it a bit further down, but I'll talk you through how we get it. Free cash flow is operating activity minus capital expenditures. And the cash flows from operating activities are down here. Net cash flow is provided by operating activities. For the quarter, firstly, it was 2 billion compared to 3 billion in this year. So up a billion and 5.8 to 9.1. So that is up massively. Uh, how do we get free cash flow? Well, we need to take away the capital expenditures, which is purchases related to property, equipment, and tangible assets. If we look on the quarter, down slightly, 283 million to 273. So the free cash flow for the year will be about 270 uh, million, sorry, 2.7 billion. And on the year, capital expenditures are down as well, 1.1 billion in 2021, which basically means they would have around about uh, 4. Uh, 7 billion in free cash flow, but now CapEx is down. That gives you a free cash flow of around about 8 billion. So up massively, basically doubled. And if we go back to Yahoo Finance and compare on the cash flows, 
3 billion, 4.2, 4.8, and now they're up to 8 billion. So they are going from strength to strength right here. And that is the last thing. And yeah, this is where they uh, nicely do the uh, the additions and subtractions. So I don't have to, but I just wanted to go through it. You can see here, operating activities, uh, CapEx, principles and payments on purchases equipment. Easy for me to say. So now what we're going to do is have a look at my updated models. I've calculated the future free cash flows based on the uh, earnings. We've sort of estimated them out based on the previous percentages and we will see what that gives us. So in 2022, they would they would expect more free cash flow than what they have currently. And this then goes up to about 13.8 billion in 2025. What does that give us as a calculated stock price? $111 a share, which means it's overvalued by about 55%. So that is a bit worrying on the free cash flow side. When was the last time they were $111 a share? Uh, this has to go back to March of 2021. Uh, even then, yep, at the bottom of 21, they were about that. But we've got to remember that these are fast growing companies. A lot of investors really love this stock. So let's see what they would have to do to make it a buy based on discount free cash flow. I think this will be a bit more interesting, but we'll go into that in a second. Let's say that the revenues are increasing quite a bit. The revenues was a 38% increase. Analysts are expecting it to go down in 2022 and 2023, but let's just say that Nvidia can keep going from strength to strength here, and we'll give them 25% increases there. Uh, what would that give us? Not much of a change, $134 a share. And let's just say that we take out 2018 and the net revenues, well, that was the thing, profit has gone up so massively this year. Normally it's about 100%. So let's go 120%. This would give us 9.8 billion in free cash flow. And the net margins have increased as well. Let's say to 36%. This would give us 11 billion, 13 billion, and 17. Still overvalued by discounted free cash flow. These are very bullish estimates. Um, and you can see discounted free cash flow still thinks the stock is a little overvalued. But this is why we also use this the Buffer Graham intrinsic value model. What does this do? It takes earnings per share and expected growth rate into account. NVIDIA's earnings per share now is 3.85. Earnings per share is the, well, net income over the amount of shares outstanding. It was previously around about uh, 3.2, but this has increased. So what does this give us? $335 a share, which is a 26% discount. So Buffett Graham intrinsic value says the stock is a buy. That is good to see. So discount free cash flow doesn't care for the stock mostly, but on these fast growing companies that have um, a lot of revenue but the free cash flow isn't as good i mean i just did a video on biocom discounted free cash flow said the stock was excellent buffer graham intrinsic value didn't like it this one the buffer graham intrinsic value likes it so the models do say it is a buy based on discounted free cash flow so we're just gonna have a quickly have a look at some technicals we've got a 50 day in uh green 100 day in yellow and the 200 day in red so what's currently happening with the stock we'll just go to the year chart uh the price is above the 200 day which is good the 50 day is the highest as well it looks like it is about across here but if we have some oh the market has reacted not too favorably to this remember it was just down about uh, a tenth of a percent now it's down 1.5 percent and 1.8 percent and dropping very interesting to see but if we go out and see the 200 day has been a solid line of support that hasn't really been broken in nvidia since august of 2019 even in the pandemic it broke below it and raised up which means it was a good opportunity to buy a 228 which it just was before um and we do have this as the lowest so the price needs to break through these moving averages again which nvidia normally does pretty consistently next what we're going to be doing is looking at the macd uh, let me just get that up right now macd is the moving average convergence divergence and what we want to see here is some bullish tendencies so the macd and signal line have crossed this is de uh, defined by the green histogram you can see it crossed about here but the next thing we're liking is these are under the zero, which is normally a very bearish sign. But if these are to continue, it would go above this uh, signal line, which is zero, above the zero, which would be a good time to buy. The last time we did that was in October, where we went on this big run. But probably looking a bit negative. I imagine this might cross again because of this 1.7% decrease. And finally, let's have a look at RSI. Is the stock in overbought or oversold regions? It is currently about even on the dailies uh, if nvidia does go in the oversold regions that does look like a buy pretty consistently if we go back to march in 21 it was oversold 
and even in the pandemic it wasn't that much oversold so if you do see nvidia in those regions which it's not right now it's about fairly it's about even then i would say buy it and if we just look at the weeklies from more of a longer view nvidia is very rarely on the underbought regions it was back in 2019 but the lowest it's been is about here so that does look like it is a buy signal as well because you would expect it to go to the upside but that is my uh, video on nvidia hopefully you guys enjoyed it very quick hopefully i'm the first person who gets it out but anyway uh, please give a like if you enjoyed it subscribe if you're not already and i'll catch you guys next time